And, uh, you know, and what you see before, when you went to Molenbeek, you saw the intolerance of people. They're telling you, you don't have any place here. Get out of here. And that's what we see is bringing in people by the millions into Western civilization in the name of tolerance. And we must not say anything bad about bringing these people in. And yet they're going to establish the most intolerant society. We have never seen anything like this anywhere in our lifetime or many of our ancestors for multiple generations. We've never seen this kind of intolerance in the West. And it's an intolerance that not only extends to penalties and anger and harsh words, they will kill you out of their intolerance as well. Well, exactly. Just like reporter Daniel Pearl. Uh, Daniel Pearl was actually investigating the guy who put these uh, uh, numerous compounds up in America that uh, Mumbark Ali Jolani, part of Al-Fukra, uh, helped start and fund here in America. Daniel Pearl actually went to Pakistan to go speak with his cleric and was abducted and then essentially uh, murdered. And they yes. believe that jo Jolani had a lot to do with that. Now, I was going to show you guys this. Inside the compound, they make their own paper. It's called the Islamic Post. And uh, we found a very interesting article in here because it's titled. Hold on a second. I got to go through this. And, and the Islamberg, that is a, a private compound. It's not an incorporated city or anything like that, right? Yes, it's, it's a private compound. Now, it says right here, fear Sharia is coming to America, question mark. Too late. It's already here. Now, when I spoke with the sheriff of deposit wow. here in New York, the guy said that they govern themselves within this compound. So we said, essentially, if it gets to a point where they call the police, they, they will ask the police to come on and help them. But it doesn't happen. They're very secretive. And he said, whatever happens, whatever kind of violence, killing, murder, whatever it may be that happens there, they deal with it internally. So my next question to the sheriff was, is, is that uh, basically Sharia law running their compound? And he said, yes, it is. And he talked about how they wear military uh, clothing, uh, garbs, and they also are a militant uh, group of people. Yeah, so it's, the it's, fact it's, that it is so secretive and that we can't get in there and find out what's going on. Yeah, uh, it's the fact that it's Sharia law, is, as we've seen in the community in uh, Michigan, where they say within 500 feet of a mosque, you can't have any alcohol. And so that's changing everything about that small town. That is Sharia law. Uh, de facto. It's not de jure. They didn't declare it. They didn't say, we're erecting uh, Sharia law. No, instead, what they do is they implement the different aspects of it whenever they get a majority in any area. We see the intolerance come out at that point. Yeah, they were trying to compare it in the article, the Sharia law, to our U.S. Constitution. I mean, there's definitely some <laughs> interesting stuff in this paper. Shane Steiner's involvement with InfoWarsLife.com truly happened in an organic way. I went to high school with Shane, his brother, knew his parents well, and he was visiting the office once, hadn't been to the office in years, and said, wow, I notice you're making and selling supplements. Do these really work? Because I've tried a lot of supplements as a, a workout enthusiast, and I really think most of them are hype. And I said, here, take some home, try it. Well, a few weeks later, he came in blown away and said, I want to buy three boxes of this stuff to give my friends and family. It's simply amazing. He said, why does it work so well? And I said, listen, go to InfoWarsLife.com, watch the informational videos with Dr. Group and others. They understand how it all works. I know that it works for me. That's all I understand. The science, the facts, the research, people's testimonials, they're all on InfoWarsLife.com. You can check it out for yourself. I wanted to go to the gym. I wanted to push myself and work out harder. And that led to me being able to come out and do stuff like the barefooting and the surfing and stuff like that, which one I would have never done. I, I never would have done that uh, two years ago. Shane has said over and over again, more than just libido and energy, it made him want to get into the gym more. It made him want to get in better shape. And believe me, the Steiners have amazing genetics. Uh, his brother is a world champion steer wrestler. His dad, Bobby Steiner, is a famous world champion bull rider. They've got natural genetics. But when you added this to the mix, in Shane's own words, it took him to the next level. Shane noticed the mental clarity. 
Bobby was able to work out longer and gain muscle mass. He's already completely shredded. I gotta admit, for me, the biggest effect has been libido. Now, I've never claimed to have a body like some beach model, but back when I was 20, 22 years old and worked out every day, I looked great. But over the years, and being married, and having three kids, and working 18 hours a day, I gained basically 100 pounds. And it's been a long process of losing that weight in the last four years. But if you look at the photos and the videos of what I looked like four or five years ago versus today, the results are dramatic. I'd already cleaned up my diet, I was working out hard, but I'd only lost about 20 pounds. It was adding the other key ingredients ingredients from InfoWarsLife.com that helped me personally go to the next level and shed another 35 pounds. This has actually made me feel so good that uh, here lately, about a year ago, I started training jujitsu and that kind of led to doing some boxing and kickboxing. I mean, it's, it's amazing that two years ago I was on the couch and couldn't even tie my shoes. And now I'm training with MMA fighters and uh, just doing stuff that I never thought that I'd, I would be doing ever again. So Super Male Vitality has allowed me to do some amazing things. And if it has those kind of effects for me, I know that it will do great things for you. So just try Super Male Vitality. I promise you, you'll love it. And finally, let's look at Anthony Gucciardi, Infowars.com reporter. He also works with Dr. Group and others helping develop the newest, most cutting edge, high quality supplements. Let's take a look at what happened when he tried to barefoot ski for the first time with the Steiners. And remember, we're not making fun of him. He had the will to get in the arena, and he's lost more than 10 pounds in the last few years of fat and gained more than 10 pounds of muscle and Anthony chalks it up to super male vitality as well. Bottom line, folks, you want to discover the power of super male vitality and super female vitality for yourself by visiting InfoWarsLife.com today or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. President Obama has said he wants to bring a conservative 10,000 Syrian refugees here to the United States. Now, while this may seem like a humanitarian effort, you have to remember that it's Obama and his administration that are arming al-Qaeda rebels to go into Syria and tear up the location. They're burning Christian villages, they're chopping people's heads off, uh, ripping out people's vital organs, and doing all manner of horrific things. Now, to talk more about this, we have Syrian girl Mimi Alaham. And thank you for joining us today, Mimi. Thanks for having me, Jakar. So it's a hot topic here in the States. I know it's very important to you as well. You know, what's going on with the Syrian refugees? Um, a lot of people here in the States are concerned about what's going to happen if the people actually come here. Uh, we have many governors tr trying to refuse entering Syrian refugees. Meanwhile, Obama is saying, let's bring them here. Do you have an opinion one way or the other, whether they should be coming to the United States? Well, you know, I think in the first place, we need to reframe the entire debate because you have one side that's basically uh, demonizing Syrians and the other side that is saying we should have complete multiculturalism and no nation state. You know, the, the um, left wing protesters basically are saying that. And um, we have to actually take a step back and question how did we get here? Yes. And that is by the creation of these wars and the, the promotion of terrorism in the Middle East. In the Middle East, and you know there is uh, an objective through these wars to uh, uh, force multiculturalism, force people out of their you know homelands uh, without their will, and put put them somewhere else. And uh, the reason for this is to annihilate the existence of nation states. And this is something that um, Zbigniew Brzezinski. Uh, is uh, he's one of the main founders of the Trilateral Commission and Obama's advisor has always promoted, you know, that the nation state should no longer exist and should be destroyed. Um, so before we, you know, get into whether they should come or not, you have to first, you know, ask how the Syrians themselves got to the situation and uh, they don't want to be refugees. Nobody wants to be refugees. And a lot of them are saying that they would love to be able to return home if you heard them um, speak for themselves. You know, ideally, people should be able to stay in the land that they love uh, with their own family members. Uh, how, you know, and the, the thing is, um, the idea, although the idea that 
these refugees are ISIS and hence dangerous forgets the fact that the majority of ISIS is not even Syrian. ISIS came in from around the world to Syria. So this started with um, ISIS sympathized sympathetic Europeans and Americans going into Syria. And, you know, interestingly, ISIS has this multicultural, uh, multinational, um, you know, ideology to it. They don't, they don't actually believe that the Syrian nation belongs to the Syrian people. So, you know, it's like two birds with one stone. And with the Paris attacks, you know, so part of this debate of, of demonizing Syrians and, uh, you know, it's actually on purpose because it, it is uh, one of the means in which to uh, convince people that uh, bombing Syria is the right thing to do. In reality, the right thing to do would be to stop funding terrorism and to allow the Syrian uh, country to rebuild and for the refugees to be able to return home. Because even if the U.S. you know accepts a few thousands of them, there is millions of refugees, and it's not going to solve any problem. It's just sort of like a um, to alleviate the the concerns of the you know left wing do gooders that uh, now get to feel good about themselves because they got a few uh, thousand Syrian refugees to the states, whereas you know they're actually um, it's, it's a half measure. Death. It's in a half house. measure. Yeah, freezing to death in the camps in, in Turkey and Jordan for the last three years without any prospects of a future. You know, and some of these people have had their entire like livelihoods destroyed, um, their homes, their businesses, and they have nothing. They're coming in with nothing. And it's not a situation that anybody actually wants uh, to be in. So uh, it's all being created by these wars. And uh, one of the other thing I have to speak to is this idea that, you know, we should only, um, I've heard some U.S. politicians say that we should only bring in Christian uh, refugees or Christians should be prioritized. And again, that's part of an insidious plot to uh, genocide Christians in the Middle East, which has been going on for years. You know, we saw it, uh, the, the population of Iraq Christians basically wiped out and continue to be wiped out even before ISIS came into the scene. Um, so this is, this is again, and, you know, part of that plan to uh, remove uh, the history of the Middle East, which is the birthplace of Christianity uh, from the Middle East, and um, also to brain drain the Middle East by um, pushing out all of these refugees. Some of them, you know, it's, you, there's a mixed bag of people. Some of them have, are poor and some of them have come from you know, educated backgrounds. Um, and it, it's part of uh, preventing Syria from being able to stand on its feet and rebuild by brain draining um, all these refugees. And not just Syria, all the Middle Eastern countries that have been suffering through war in the, in the last few years. And you make a very interesting point because I tried very exhaustively to explain this to people, what you just said. It's uh, the policies of the United States, and it's not all our fault, but you know, a large part of it is, whether you talk about uh, sending Al Qaeda into Syria, you talk about drone strikes in Yemen and Pakistan going down to uh, Mexico, sending guns down there, Operation Fast and Furious, and it's not all Obama, you have uh, the Bush family with Iraq, you have Reagan with Iran Contra. So it's been going on for a very long time in many different places, but as you say, you know, Obama will go send a drone strike or send a jet to go blow up a hospital and say, oops, and then after he spends our tax dollars doing that, he wants to bring everybody here, like you said, to make himself feel better, to, to clear his own conscience. Meanwhile, he's double tapping the, the American people saying, give me your money for these wars. And then after he tears up the country, use your tax dollars to fund the people or to house the people that I completely ruined their country. Well, absolutely, except I'm not sure that he has a conscience, but I'm sure that there are people in the United States that do have a conscience and they might actually feel that uh, it's the right thing to do you know, to bring in these refugees when really the right thing to do um, is to stop the wars. And the most ironic thing is um, some of the newspaper headlines coming from the UK uh, and in Europe when uh, one of these uh, children, Syrian refugee children, drowned off the coast, the headlines were, you know, bomb Syria for this child, which uh, creates more refugees. So we, really the, the, the solution isn't talked about. And that is because they don't want a solution. They want to mix, uh, take people away from their homelands and mix up all the nations so that they can have their one world order. And uh, you know, the, the other thing I wanted to speak to, a part of it is uh, the corporations as well. You know, they get to uh, bring in people from everywhere and drop down the wages. And um, 
Syrian Syrians, uh, the passport, as we saw from the Paris attacks, 